Eccles, and he went on to Ackle and he opened his cottage is now the artist's residence. And I know many people, uh, many writers and artists have gone um, to the artist's residence there. Um, growing up in East Mayo, uh, Ackle was like another country. It was a strange, exotic, savage place beyond Westport somewhere <laughs> where you dared to go and where the wit what, Al what Jan read out there. And I had this air in my head about, uh, about it being an exotic place. I could never have imagined, I only vaguely heard this story, I could never have imagined that um, a st this story, a story so dramatic and so harrowing could have, could have taken place. Um, and when I got into it, I just, it just got under my skin. I suppose it was, it, there was, it was so much history, uh, particularly the harvesters, the 12, 13, 14 year old girls going, uh, going on boats to pick turnips and potatoes in, in um, Scotland. It was a very harrowing story. It, it, it includes drowning tragedies, arson attacks, land agitation, prison escapes, courtroom dramas, extradition cases, and then in the middle of it all, this extraordinary relationship between Agnes MacDonnell and James Lynch Um And I feel I've got it out of my system. I felt, the, I felt it actually quite a traumatic uh, thing to write. And uh, um, Ackle, as you know, anybody who has been to Ackle, it's an overpowering physical landscape. And I found I could only take it in short doses. And I feel now I've just got the story out of my system. I know that everybody in Ackle has their own version of the story. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they would disagree with me about, the, about lots of it. And I've heard bits tonight. I'd have to write <coughs> Khan a new edition because I've heard so <laughs> <laughs> um, And I just as I look down there, I see somewhere, I think I see Paul and Heather. Heather? Paul and Heather. So just to welcome Paul and Heather. Um, and uh, it's lovely, it's lovely to see you both here. Um, I'm going to finish. I'll meet you all in the White House afterwards. <coughs> and I'm sure there's people that haven't, but I just want to read a short page clip to us, uh, page clip. <laughs> and it's the prologue to the book. It's 1888, it's six years before this dramatic event happened in the Valley House, and Agnes MacDonald uh, crosses the bridge and arrives in Ackle to take possession of her estate in North Ackle, uh, little knowing what's going to happen. So I'm going to just read you, um, uh, just one page, not very long, about her arriving in Ackle. <coughs> Agnes MacDonnell is exhausted. She has travelled by rail across England from her London home at Galsai Square, from Hollyhead by steamer to Kingstown, and then the final leg of her journey across the breadth of Ireland on the Midland Great Western Railway train to Westport. She crosses the bridge to Ackle Island to the rattle of car wheels and to the click clop of horse hooves, her body jerking from side to side with the movement. The glint of new steel on the railings reminds her of the city she had left behind. Had she travelled to the island a year earlier, while the swivel bridge was under construction, the car would have had to wait until low tide to pass through the channel at Ackle Sound. It is just ten more miles to her new home at the Valley House in Ackle's north corner. There she will rest, replenish her energies and tackle the challenges of the 2,000 acre estate she now owns. Many travellers before her have come to this remote place. They followed the same approach road that swings in an arc around the south shores of Black Sod Bay. Four miles out from Ackle and turning the bend at Tonrigi, the visitor faces the spectacle of Schlievemore Mountain, mottled with shadows like patches on a piebald horse. The mountain overpowers the island, and it is, this, it is as if it wraps within its entrails the dramas that unfolded beneath its shade. The travellers to Ireland in the previous half century were many and varied, proselytizers imbued with the zeal to convert souls, independent Victorian women who wrote of famine horrors, men who hunted for red-brown grouse on mountain slopes, artists mesmerized by the island's shifting light, who set up their easels at the Atlantic's edge, seekers of the amethyst purple glow at the quartz quarry in Kem. Few outsiders have heard of the, the townland of Valley, for it has not drawn attention to itself 